So I got good news today. Andy Stanley finally comes out of the closet and confirms his views on the LBGTQ conversation and where he stands as far as marriage, sin, and sexual relationships. I'm going to play the clip of Andy making his views known. It only took eight years for him to do this, but he finally does it. And then we're going to discuss the other parts of his sermon that seem to be kind of concerning. I'm going to try to be as fair as I can to Andy and have a, tr a truth grace balance in this video. And I say where I think he's gone wrong and I'm going to commend him in the areas that he's gone right. Many people have called on Andy to bring clarity, but to no avail. Dr. Michael Brown called him out two weeks ago and called him to repent. After eight years of asking Andy point blank to make his views known, he just wouldn't do it. Then he was confronted on Twitter by a few pastors of gay affirming statements he made behind closed doors. The pastor's name was Ryan Fisconti and was collaborated by two other pastors that said that he absolutely made these statements. And they were asking Andy to come forward and clarify and he never did. Where he seemed to affirm firm gay marriage and those pastors asked him for clarity and Andy just didn't respond. It is because Andy recently had the unconditional conference at his church to help parents who have LBGTQ children. This is a really good thing and a much needed ministry in today's world. And I commend Andy for taking on a mission field like this. It seems like nobody wants the job. But Al Mohler of the Southern Baptist Convention openly sl slammed Andy in a recent article that caught everyone's attention. It was because Andy had two gay men lead in one of these sessions. We're gonna get into this a little bit later on. Before we get started today, hit subscribe. I promise to give you the best Christian content moving forward. And it's gonna be no cookie cutter stuff. I'm gonna only talk about relevant things. So hit subscribe, also tap the bell to get notified so you could know when I release a video. Real quick, I have a Patreon community which costs $5 a month and I just wanted to give a shout out to Billy Amor who signed up this week as one of the Patreons. So there'll be some benefits for people that sign up and you'll be able to help me get the gospel out to 1 billion people. So we're gonna play the clip of Andy <clears throat> making his views known. And this is good news for once. I'm gonna commend Andy on this. Let's get into it. So. The, the message is the same for everybody. Sex is for married people. Along these same lines, we affirm all three of the Apostle Paul's statements on the topic of same sex sex. Romans 1, 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Timothy 1, he references this. And we affirm exactly what the, Paul, the Apostle Paul says. In other words, what the Apostle Paul called sin was sin then, and it's sin now. Regarding marriage, and this feels weird to even say this, but just make sure everybody knows where we are. We talk about marriage or we talk about and teach about marriage the same way Jesus and the apostles do. Every instruction in the Bible regarding marriage references or assumes a husband and a wife, a man or a woman. So biblical marriage, biblical marriage is between a man and a woman. We've never shied away from that. We don't change the words in order not to offend people. Now, here's what may surprise all of us straight people. The gay attenders in our churches they aren't shocked that we talk that way. They aren't shocked by that. They expect that. They grew up on that. They hoped for that. They prayed for that. Okay, so as you see here, some good news as far as this is concerned. Andy confirms that a marriage is between a man and a woman and that homosexuality practices are sinful. And he affirms all the New Testament passages on homosexuality, which at one point he called clobber passages, which are Romans 1, 1 Corinthians 6, and 1 Timothy 1. So it's good news. And you know what? In today's times, I'll take any mega church pastor that's willing to stand up for biblical truth and to see him as an ally, see him as someone that I can work with because in today's time in the apostate church, there's not many that were willing to stick their necks out to do this. But in the second part of the video, I'm going to explain where I feel like Andy went wrong during the other parts of his sermon. And I'm going to give some clips from that sermon. But before I do that, I always want to start off and say some positive things that I got from Andy out of this sermon. So some really good things about Andy. Okay. 
So the first one is he is reaching this community that basically no one else really wants the job and to do anything about it. Okay. Especially with the LBDTQ youth. Okay. His heart is for young people. And he just did a part in that sermon where his church has a big focus on young people. For being someone who is a youth pastor for many years, it was like almost you got this feeling like just don't break anything in the church, keep the kids quiet and in a separate part of the building and that's great. But I can tell Andy really cares about the youth at his church and the children at his church. Andy has a tremendous heart to reach the lost and that comes across in this sermon and his heart to understand and sympathize with the members of the LBGTQ community and their pain. And he stood for biblical values. It took him a long time to do that and he did a lot of damage in the process. But finally, he did take a stand for truth. I'm gonna say another thing. Andy is an excellent communicator. This guy is a scary good communicator. And I just wanna commend him for that. And the last thing was his love for his church came through in this so much. The Bible says this, that you have all of these leaders in your life, but not many spiritual fathers. <clears throat> and the truth is, as you can tell, Andy really loves his church. So before we get into some of the concerning parts of the sermon, I just wanted to spend some time just really just commending Andy for good things, just in case he watches this video. I want to be fair to him. I want to treat this video like Andy was standing in front of him and really do this with grace and compassion. So there's a clip. I'm going to play one clip where he's going to talk about the difference between <clears throat> um, that Christianity is the difference between a Christianity that draws circles and draws lines. You're going to feel, you're going to know what I'm saying in two seconds. I felt that this was a bit of a bit of concerning. You, we'd love for you to come every single weekend. You, you may gain a different perspective on us for sure, but maybe even the Christian faith. So I know we have some people from the outside, but this is, I guess, symbolically my way of saying, I want you to hear this from me first before the outside world hears it. So back to the article. Um, Y'all are very smart people. So all you have to do is, you know, in 30 seconds, you can read between the lines. The author is actually accusing me of departing from his version of biblical Christianity. So I want to go on record and say, I have never subscribed to his version of biblical Christianity to begin with. So I'm not leaving anything. And he, if he were here, he would say, well, Andy, I've never subscribed to your version of biblical Christianity. And that's okay. We can agree to disagree. But this is so extraordinarily misleading. In my opinion, just my opinion, his version of biblical Christianity is the problem. His version, this version of biblical Christianity is why people are leaving Christianity unnecessarily. It's the version, it's the version that causes people to resist the Christian faith because they can't find Jesus in the midst of all the other stuff and all the other theology and all the other complexity that gets globbed on to the message. Bottom line, that version of Christianity draws lines and Jesus drew circles. He drew circles so large and included so many people in his circle that it consistently made religious leaders nervous. And his circle was big enough to include sinners like me. And I come from a long line of sinners like me. No Eric Church fans in the crowd. Okay. So Andy is referencing the, the letter that Al Mohler wrote, who is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And he's saying that his version of Christianity draws lines where Andy sees his view of Christianity as Jesus drawing circles. Now, there is some truth in Andy's statement here. There's no question about that, but I'm going to get into the downside of this. This makes Jesus out to be someone who accepted everyone. But this is not the case. Ask the rich young ruler. And we have about a dozen accounts of Jesus walking away from people and not continuing a conversation. Jesus did not, he loved everybody, but he did not continue to disciple everybody, okay? And so again, a clear illustration of that is the rich young ruler who walked away sad. When Jesus gave his speech on communion, many, many departed and walked away because they couldn't accept the harshness of the reality that he was talking about. 
So not everybody always accepts Christianity and Jesus doesn't accept everybody. So there is some truth. Jesus did eat with sinners and tax collectors, but at no time did he engage in their behaviors. No time did he sympathize with their sin and say, oh, this is okay because you know, you're know you in pain and you're hurting and it's okay what you're doing. He ate with them to call them out of sin. Jesus ate with them to bring him up to his level. Now the gospel is for everyone. And there's the famous song that Billy Graham used to play at his conferences, come as you are. Everybody should come to Jesus. But the second part of that statement is come as you are, but don't stay as you are, right? I think about this. I played a lot of sports in high school and college and you got a coach. <clears throat> and that coach's job was to bring everybody on that team up to another level. You weren't going to join the team and get worse at something. You came on and the coach would help you develop your skills to come to a higher level. So come as you are, but don't stay as you are, right? So Andy view is not really correct. Leaders have to be very clear on who they are. As Michael Brown says, we need to have hearts of compassion, but backbones of steel. Compassion is the grace, backbone is the truth. And we need to hold both of them simultaneously together. We're inviting all people to preach and teach to, so we can pull them up to our level. Jesus wasn't hanging with the sinners to get comfortable with them and feel bad with them. So we start out in Christianity as drawing circles, as Andy said, calling everybody in to hear the message of the gospel. But as people grow, we're beginning to disciple them and draw lines. Okay, and lines is clear biblical truth. And if we don't have lines in Christianity and we don't have distinctions, we become a social club for people to hang out and drink coffee. And that's not what Jesus died for. He died for us to give him everything. Jesus died on the cross for standing up for truth. He could have backed down and saved his life, but he didn't. And so the whole point of the gospel is Jesus standing, taking radical stands against things and almost being killed in his first sermon in his hometown and being killed almost several times throughout his ministry because he stood up for truth. Okay, so we want everybody to come as they are, but we don't want them to stay as they are. And we want people to come hear the gospel, but at some point we have to confront them with the truth that could be offensive, that could lead people to go elsewhere, or could lead people like the rich young ruler to walk away sad. We had this story and we had a ministry that I was working with in my church to do Bible studies for LBGTQ people. And it was just a fantastic experience. So we had one of the leaders that, that did this curriculum come in to speak. And we invited everybody from the community, gay people, straight people, just to hear what Andy had to say and his views. And at the end, we did a Q&A session. And it was at this moment that I realized I was at the wrong church. Someone asked this author, what do you think about <clears throat> attending a gay wedding? And he answered straightforwardly, very, very straightforward. No, I would not attend a gay wedding and I wouldn't recommend anybody else do so. My pastor got up on stage, took the microphone and got up and said, well, that's not necessarily my view or the view of people at this particular church. I wouldn't rule out attending a gay wedding. Okay. And so the truth was, and I said, I scratched my head right there and it was a moment, okay, where the leadership of this church, the senior leadership, this is a well-known church, could not draw and take a real stand for Christianity. At the same time, we wanna have compassion. We wanna outreach to everybody. But I felt like my pastor really needed to take a stand on this. He couldn't do it. And he actually, kind of contradicted the speaker that he brought in, which I felt was a little silly. So basically, yeah, if we, if we don't have a Christianity with no no's, with no limits, with no lines, what do we really have but a big blob of nothing, right? 
So basically we have to have some lines. We have to have some distinctions. And so that was a part of Andy's sermon that I can kind of do away with. I see what his heart, that his heart is for outreach and everything. And like I said, I commended him for that before. Let's take a look, another look, part of his sermon right now. Their lives, they ask God to take it away. In my experience, I've talked to many, 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 many gay men in particular. And I would say they don't just ask God to take it away. They beg God to take it away. They weep and ask God to take it away. They're afraid of disappointing their parents. Depending on the church that they attend, they are literally afraid they are going to hell. Not because of anything they've done, but because of who they are, because of the message, not of culture, the message of the church. The implications are this, that most, not all, I wanna be careful, most gay men or women you know, once upon a time, they were a kid with a terrifying secret and they asked God to change them and God did not answer their prayer. Okay, so there's some nuances here that have to be talked about. Again, Andy has great compassion for the LBGTQ community, and that's fantastic. This is a mission field I feel called to. I worked with this ministry for almost two years with them, doing Bible studies for the LBGTQ community, those that wanted an alternative to that lifestyle, right? We can't push this on people that don't want that, okay? But if people wanted to explore another opportunity, we had it. Andy really has a compassion for these people. But at the same time, you can see in this clip, Andy believes in many aspects, but he didn't say it that way, that he believes that they were born this way and there's nothing that he can do, they can do about it. That's almost like Lady Gaga, who basically made the, made the song, famous song, Born This Way, that they have this situation and there's nothing they can do about it. And that was nuanced in this conversation. Andy is kind of seeming to hint towards that, although we can't know for certain but these clips seem to indicate that Andy doesn't believe that these people can change. And this sin is somehow different from other sins that people battle with. But sin is sin. Struggle is struggle. Okay? And let me start off by saying this. The church in America has a major heterosexual sin problem that needs to be addressed. And that's part of the reason why the church is facing this huge issue with the LBGTQ community because they haven't faced their own issues. So this video is in no way to stone LBGTQ people. We love them. We are called to love all people in Christianity, even our enemies. Christianity is not a religion of hate. And the Bible says that if you hate anyone, the love of God does not abide in you. So the LBGTQ community, like I said, is dear to my heart. And I'm going to reach them and I'm going to reach lots of them. And I'm going to talk about this on this channel a lot because this is a relevant conversation we need to have. And I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from you that came out of the lifestyle. I want to hear from you, those of you that are still struggling with this. I want to hear from you people and straight Christians too, as well, your viewpoints and what you think. Now we, now, you know that we can learn from personal experience. I've had hundreds of people who watch my videos on the LBGTQ conversation reach out to me that says, I have been set free. I've been set free for many years. God delivered me from this. He took it away. I'm married now. I have children and it's been many, many years. This is hundreds and hundreds of people that have reached out for me all over the world. They have been set free. It is possible for them to change. And I didn't see that in any part of Andy's sermon. Yes, this is a really hard reality. And this is messy, okay? But it is possible for people to change. I really wish you could see the LBGTQ Bible study looks like. Let's just say there's never a dull moment. It's one of the most exciting, fun things that you can ever do. 
that I just have such a heart for this community. I even go to the gay pride parade to see if I can pray for people or talk to people about God and stuff. It's just amazing. But in these cases, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need an anointing. You need a fire in your bones. You need a calling. And I'm not sure if Andy operates on this level, to be honest, but I don't want to be judgmental, but it certainly doesn't seem like this. Andy, my message to you is all things are possible. Yes, gay people struggle. Yes, they really go through a lot. Yes, it is very hard to turn away from this lifestyle and it doesn't happen by osmosis. We're gonna talk about this more later in the video. So stick with me to the end, especially you that are interested in this conversation and this ministry. But they can change and I just didn't hear that from Andy. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next clip right now. I'm gay, moving on. In 2013, um, Greg and Lynn McDonald, who had moved to Atlanta pretty recently, began attending Gwinnett Church. Um, 12 years earlier, before that time, their son, Greg Jr., had, he was 17 years old, or 17 or 18 years old. Um, he was found out and eventually, and, and immediately came out. Um, Greg Jr. was raised in church. The, the McDonald's are conservative Christians, Bible-believing Christians. Um, their son and daughter grew up going to Christian school. So, this took them by complete surprise. Like they just didn't see this coming at all. They said, we felt like we had to choose between our faith and our child. This is a tension. Just about every conservative or evangelical Christian family feels when one of their kids comes out. I feel like based on the, what I was taught, how the Bible was taught to me, I, 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 I can either hang on to my faith or I can hang on to my child, but how do I hang on to both. Lynn says, she shared some of her story at the conference in the last couple of days. She said, I became Bible mama, Bible mama. It's like, if I can just feed my son enough Bible verses, certainly he's gonna realize I'm not really gay or this is wrong or I need to change or I need to stop or I need to quit. And she said, I just kept feeding verse after verse after verse. And we would have these discussions, she said, until we didn't because he just stopped engaging in the conversation. Their story is they completely alienated their son. They did it all wrong. Good motives, love their son, did it wrong. Okay, so here Andy was talking about, and I kind of agree with him a little bit in this section of the video. What most sincere Christians do in this situation is they throw Bible verses at LBGTQ people, especially LBGTQ teenagers, right? And basically, most sincere Christian people just try to tell them truth and they, they, they're trying to fill them with Bible verses and all that. And that's the normal Christian response. And I agree with Andy, this effect doesn't work. It's a start, but this is not effective and it doesn't work. For somebody who works with this community, that's the worst thing that you can do. And it's kind of like the old school Christianity that I grew up with, just preach directly at everything. And that does not work in this ministry or with this population. It's kind of like trying to just clobber them with the, what, what the Bible says about homosexuality. Tim Ross had a brilliant comment on this recently, and I posted this on my channel in a short. And he said this, when I sit down and I talk with gay people and have this conversation, I say, listen, this is how he starts off, listen, Let's just take away everything what the Bible says about homosexuality. And it shocks them because they're, they're thinking they're gonna get hit with the Bible and all this truth and stuff like that. And they're like, okay, yeah, keep going. And Tim goes, but you don't see one relationship in the Bible, any place that's covering 6,000 years of human history, not one instance of a gay relationship being confirmed or being being supported by God in the whole entire Bible. So forget about what's in the Bible. We also talk, have to talk about what's not in the Bible. And that's a very effective strategy to use with this community to say it's not in the Bible. And if God wanted it to be in there, that he was confirming this type of behavior or these relationships, he surely would have added it. And it's not there. Not one story, not one situation, not one instant. Okay. So basically, um, homosexuality unfolds over many, many years, probably starting in childhood, right? And it takes many years as well to unravel it. 
This is not a one, two, three process where someone just makes a decision for God, gets set free, and three days later, they're, they're totally okay. And that does happen, right? I've heard a few stories where that did happen, right? But the situation is, in the Christian world, a lot of times they think they can pray the gay away, right? Which is just offensive for the person that you're praying for. It's not the right approach, okay? And you might need to do deliverance. And a lot of times deliverance is really needed in these situations. But usually this is going to take discipleship. This is going to be loving someone, accepting someone, at the same time standing for truth and just walking with them over a long time period. And these people have to be willing participants. So this is not like a one, two, three process. I like to try to compare it to something else, like try talking someone who's an alcoholic out of drinking and just give them the Bible verses and stuff like that. It doesn't work. Like I said, there are times where God can move supernaturally and heal someone one, two, three. But a lot of times when people are struggling with drugs and alcohol in my church and the street ministry that I do, I pray for them. I pray for deliverance. I pray that they would be set free. But most of the time we're looking at a long-term process. We're looking into getting this person into rehab, getting them into a 12-step group, get them going to meetings a couple of times a week. And basically, and after they start getting discipleship and education, and it's a multi-layered approach. So you really need training to do this type of ministry. And you need to offer support over a long time period. Okay, so training is so key if you're gonna work with this community. Okay, and you have to leave room for setbacks. It's not a straightforward pro uh, process. It's not, uh, it's not a slam dunk. Although I have seen cases where it happens really f fast and quick, it's usually not that way. You need to have really good training to do this ministry. Here's the manual that I work with from the ministry that I work with. This thing is the size of a dictionary. It's 500 pages and this is comprehensive. This goes through their whole entire life. This goes through their relationship with their mother, their relationship with their father, their relationship to God, their, their relationship with themselves, self-esteem, all those things. It covers 20 different lessons that goes really deep and it leaves no stun untouched. And just after they go through this program, they're just starting to come out of this, okay? So basically, yeah, it's you need training to, to work in this ministry, okay? So I'll talk to, with you more about that ministry at the end for those of you who are interested or um, in, in ministering to that community, you're going to need training. Now in the next clip, Andy talks about the two gay married men he invited to speak at the conference. This was people's main objective to the conference because these two, these two men think that you can be gay and Christian at the same time. So people weren't upset that Andy put on a conference for, for parents that, ha that have gay children. Um, that's a good thing. People were most upset about these two Christian men that are actively married and gay. And basically, and they believe that Christians, that you can be Christian and gay, practicing gay at the same time, right? And so a lot of people had a problem with that and Max Lucado ended up pulling out of this conference and he was originally chartered to speak there, but it caused so much controversy, so much blowback that he ended up, you know, pulling out of the conference. Okay. So basically that should have been assigned to Andy right there that something is wrong. Okay. So we're going to look at the next clip right now and take a look at something else that I found that was concerning. The presenters, these were presenters that McDonald's knew, this is so important. The presenters they chose were presenters that Greg and Lynn knew from their personal experience would be most helpful for these parents. And they should know because they are one of those parents. And this is why Justin and Brian were invited, the two married gay men at the center of all the controversy. And I'm sure that you've read all about that. And here's the thing about Brian and Justin. Their stories and their journeys of growing up in church and maintaining their faith in Christ and their commitment to follow Christ all through their high school and college and singles and all up to the time that they were married. Their story is so powerful for parents of gay, especially kids, that it's a story gay parents with gay kids need to hear. 
It is virtually impossible, and you know this if you stop to think about it, it is virtually impossible for a straight heterosexual parent to understand what's going on in the heart and mind of their same-sex attracted child when oftentimes their own child can't or won't verbalize it. And these two guys have an incredible way of helping parents understand what's going on in the mind and the heart specifically of their gay kids. They do an incredible job helping Christian parents understand because, understand because they have been where those parents' children are. Okay, so Andy is addressing these two gay men that were speaking at his church's conference. And here's the thing, right? Let's just be fair to Andy. I'm gonna try to be as fair as I can. I guess you could make an argument in some strange way that in get into the mind of a gay teenager, you need to f get firsthand accounts of actual gay people, right? Like let's say you were gonna send someone to war. Well, you would actually want to have an actual soldier speak with those people and explain to them what it's like. And there is some logic in this, but as I really thought about it and I really prayed about it, right? This is extremely problematic on several, on several, for several reasons. First off is because you could possibly confuse people who are already confused, right? Especially teenagers who have to navigate a really difficult situation as their own going through adolescence, right? Now you add the LBGTQ situation into this. It's nice that they can have someone that they can identify. But what happens is if these people are gay Christians, it's going to send them a confusing message that, hey, I can be a gay Christian too. And the truth is, is that it is possible to have same sex attraction that you're not operating in and be a Christian or be in the process of repenting and turning your life around saying, God, I want you to, I want you to help me with this. And I want you to help me out of this lifestyle. Okay. But I don't think it's possible to, to, to be a gay Christian who is unrepentant, okay? And I don't think it's, it's possible to be a Christian, period, if you're unrepentant. All Christians need to repent, everybody. So yeah, so as I spent a lot of time, I said, well, there are some other alternatives, things that Andy could have done or should have done. The first one that I came up with, which really isn't a good idea either, was he could have showed videos of these two guys sharing certain parts of their stories at the conference instead of having them on stage actually speaking at the conference. But I said to myself, no, Lord, there has to be a better solution. And the solution was very crystal clear, was to have two men who have came out of the lifestyle and are now restored and healed. But my thoughts are that Andy doesn't seem to know any of these people or seen any stories of people truly on the other side of this transformed, healed, and set free. Again, I know I have hundreds who have commented on my videos that are very happy in heterosexual relationships now, and they were set free. And they have walked, and I have walked dozens through the process myself. It's not a straight line, it's very messy, but it is possible, okay? So let's go into another clip here of Andy. Biblical marriage, biblical marriage is between a man and a woman. We've never shied away from that. We don't change the words in order not to offend people. Now, here's what may surprise all of us straight people. The gay attenders in our churches, they aren't shocked that we talk that way. They aren't shocked by that. They expect that. They grew up on that. They hoped for that. They prayed for that. They prayed that God would change them so they could experience that. I have sat in groups with small groups of gay men, 35 and up to 65. And watch them weep because they, didn't have a, they don't have family. They couldn't have family. They prayed for that and God didn't answer their prayer. And many are convinced that traditional marriage is not an option for them. So they commit to living a chaste life, an old fashioned word. And for many men and women who put their faith in Christ, they just decide, okay, I'm just gonna buckle down. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna 
bear down. I'm just gonna be by myself. I'm not gonna have family. I'm gonna be sexually pure. And many, 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 many do that for long seasons of time. And some, for some, it's, it's, it's their whole life. Again, here in this content, it's like I see Andy's great compassion for gay people and I commend his heart. How many other are willing to take on this job? The apostle of my church, Ken Fish, says this, the LBGTQ situation is the modern day Goliath in our church. Goliath is standing out mocking the people of God and nobody wants to fight this giant. And I totally agree. So I commend Andy for taking this. But again, I'm gonna explain where I feel Andy has gone most wrong in all of this. Because we must have hearts of compassion, but backbones of steel. It's truth and grace. And holding those two simultaneously together and not compromising on either of them. So I love that he has compassion, but it seems like he's losing on truth. One a church where I was attending, the, the, the pastor started to go woke and he stood up to the, and, and I ended up standing up to the whole church and it was a large church by myself. And no one had my back at the time. The elders and the pastors started reaching out to me, asking me to give the pastor a chance. Well, just stay around, be an agent of change, Josh. Don't leave, we need you here. You could be the one that makes the difference. And I started to pray on it. And I really deliberated over this like nothing else I have done in my whole life. Because I had so many close friends, several of the pastors were my personal friends. And the guy who planted the church was my mentor and pretty famous. And I started to pray on it. And while I was praying, this is key, please listen to me. I saw a picture as I was praying of someone who was reaching down over a cliff to pull someone up to the surface. So I saw someone reaching down to pull someone who was hanging off a cliff and pull them up onto the surface. But what happened was the person ended up pulling them down and they both died and fell off the cliff. And that's always the danger of doing street ministry, of, of reaching really populations that are really have s several different issues going on and challenging fields is to have so much compassion for people that you end up losing truth. And if you're not really clear on all of this, you could end up getting dragged down and you could both end up losing your soul in the process. That's why Jesus said, what is it if you gain the whole world, but you end up losing your soul in the process? And sometimes we can get lost in trying to help people. And I feel that this is where what's going on with Andy. I feel like he's lost himself. I feel like he's lost truth. And we could get dragged down to our death as well. He, he's got real compassion. And he's really in tune with the struggle that gay people wrestle with. Right? And that's important to have that compassion. It's tremendously difficult in... You know, they say around 3% of the population is LBGTQ. So basically, like some people say it's as high as 9, 10%. But still, you're in the small minority if you're in this group. And it's difficult. I don't want to ever take that away. At the same time, you have to hold on to the truth. That, God's, that God is not for these type of behaviors. That he's calling it sin. And he's calling us to, to step away from it, to walk away and be changed. It's like any other sin. If God could heal people from a whole plethora of sins, he can heal us from this one. So the people that stayed at that church with my pastor who started to go woke and started to go in the wrong direction, I mean, it was just so clear. They stayed at the church, but in the meantime, them and their families paid the price. And eventually after months and some after a year or two, eventually left. But it really hurt them and their families because the pastor was compromised. He wasn't standing up for truth. He didn't want to draw lines. He wanted only circles. And it hurt them and their families tremendously. And even when they got into their new churches, with good pastors that believe in biblical values, they had to heal. They had to heal. So you never want to reach down on the cliff, try to pull someone up, and they end up pulling you down and both of you get lost. So let me say this in closing. All right, 
it is nice and then i'm going to point you to a good ministry if you want to be associated with them in closing it is nice that andy affirmed biblical values this is a step in the right direction i command andy in this and i see him as an ally and a friend in this ministry that i feel called to as well but as the youtuber Rus ruslan kd said recently he gets the feeling that andy is in murky waters the, the lines have been blurred his circle is so open that there's no lines and there's no truth. He seems to be unstable and not very clear. And don't think people pick up on this. If I'm picking up on this, other people are. He seems to have lost himself in people's pain, which that pain is real, and abandoned parts of truth from the Bible. And I get the feeling that he is leaning more towards compassion for the LBGT community and leaning more away from biblical truth. I feel like he's leaning more towards them and less standing for biblical truth. Andy seemed to take a step in the right direction, but much more is needed from Andy and a lot of damage has been done. Listen, so let me explain to you this ministry that I worked with. I remember when I was planting the church, I had 20 years old with my brother-in-law, which has now grown to be a multi-campus, fairly large and successful church. We had a gay guy come in and everybody in the church loved on this guy. We were all friends with him, all contacted him frequently. We loved him, bought him Bibles, discipled him, but we just didn't have the training. And this went on for about a year and a half. And eventually this guy went back to the gay lifestyle. We were unsuccessful in our outreach. We really tried. We gave it everything that we could. We did not lack effort but we didn't have the experience, didn't have the training that's needed for this population. And this is a special population, just like in today's day and age, if you're gonna be a police officer, you've got to be called to that profession in today's day and age. It's the same thing with this ministry. You need to be called and then you need to be trained. Many had said that Andy might be secretly struggling with same-sex attraction or might be gay himself. We don't know that for sure. It's certainly possible, but we don't know that. But hundreds of people had said that to me, for sure. So if you're interested in being trained to help the LBGTQ community, or you know someone who wants to come out of that lifestyle, I'm gonna point you in the right direction today. I want you to contact this ministry. It's called Desert Streams Ministry. This was the book that I told you about. Now I study inner healing and deliverance. I've done that with Ken Fish. I've done that with many of the courses that I've taken. This is the most comprehensive inner healing tool. So this deals with sexual brokenness and the LBGTQ community. So this is not just people that are struggling with um, same-sex attraction and LBGTQ lifestyle, okay? This is dealing for all areas of sexual brokenness. Like me personally, I never struggled with same-sex attraction. That was never a problem for me. Okay, but I knew that I had sexual brokenness in my life that needed to be dealt with and I needed something massive and comprehensive. Not a one, two shots. I went down there for a ministry, went through the ministry myself in 20 different sessions. It was the most intense thing. You sat with counselors, you sat with people that went through every stage of your life. It's really the most comprehensive ministry. The ministry is called Desert Streams Ministry, and it's led by Andy Kaminsky. He's wrote several books on that. He got, he was a gay man himself in, in Southern California in the 70s and ended up getting saved. And now Andy is, is a, a father married to a wonderful woman, Annette, and he has kids and grandkids, and he's fully healed set free and delivered and now he has spent his life writing books outreaching to that community if you're going to give anyone money give a ministry like this money okay so i want you to go to you can find them at desertstreams.org i'm going to pull up their website right now it's just a wonderful wonderful um they're having um yeah so this is their desert stream website 
okay? You can go to this ministry and they have classes that you can take online and different things. Again, Desert Stream Ministry, go to desertstream.org. This is led by Andy Kaminsky as a free blog and different things. This is one of the best ministries that I've come across, not only just for the LBGT conversation, but for but for sexual brokenness and inner healing. So if you're in need of deep healing, this is the type of ministry that you want to attend and support. So I just wanted to leave you with that resource. Andy, if you're watching, these are the type of people that you want to go to. Not actively gay men who are actively gay and think that you can be Christian. You need to start try to find people that have come out of the lifestyle, that have been successful, that have been through the process, not using people that are in the process. And I think that's where you went wrong in this, Andy. I think you have a great heart. I, I really think you have a great heart. And that came across in this video, your tremendous compassion. But I think you lost some of the truth in the process. And Jesus did not just draw circles. He also drew lines. And some of those lines got him crucified and killed. So yes, I'd like to hear your comments down below, especially if you're watching from another country. Please let me know where you're watching from. I got Africa, Australia, Norway, Germany, South Africa, all over the world, people. The UK, someone emailed me from this week. I'm just so happy to have all of you people in the United States. Just um, drop a comment down below. I'd really love to hear from you. I'll do my best to um, try to answer the first couple of comments that come through and to answer any questions that you might have. Be blessed.